Thank you for having me today, y'all. Um, I'm gonna spare y'all my platform points because they'll be up online, but also y'all are all coming to the launch, right? So you'll hear them later. <laughs> I wanna talk about something that might make us all just a little bit uncomfortable. Y'all are good with that? Good. For some of us, this idea of resistance is built into simply how we exist in this space. I've chosen in my life to be an activist and organizer on one level, and yet on another it feels like I never had a choice. That it's been built into who I am in this system to have to actively pursue my liberation and the liberation of the communities that I represent. And to be honest, that's been really about survival. And I'm getting to the point where I would really like to see us get to thriving. And so I think we have to figure out how does resistance look like dismantling, but how does it also become effectively building systems and institutions that mean people can live healthy and productive lives? Yeah. In Seattle, we have a responsibility. We have what I call a duty to respond, to act, to protect, to stand with the most vulnerable and marginalized in our communities. Yes, we are the resistance, but we also must work on finding ways in which we ourselves know where we have not been resistant to the social ills that we were all born into. And it, with that comes a duty to unearth and uproot those social ills within ourselves. I don't believe that we can be an effective resistance if we don't acknowledge the ways in which we've taken on white supremacy, capitalism, and colonialism, and patriarchy within ourselves. Y'all do a great job of questioning capitalist notions, and that's something that I appreciate. I think socialist values are exactly where we all need to be. Y'all question the scarcity mentality that tells us that we don't have enough, and as we heard from our sister earlier, we do have enough. It's just been relegated to one segment of the population. There are basic human rights that I think we can all agree we all, we all deserve, housing, education, health care. And in Seattle, we live in an incredible intersection, an opportunity to model not simply what being a progressive city looks like, but how to walk our talk. But before that vision can happen, I think we have some work to do. As much as we question capitalism and even patriarchy, I think we need to learn to question whiteness and white supremacy at the same level. We need to learn to interrogate that identity of superiority that many of us were given at birth, an identity that we didn't necessarily have a choice to receive, but now we do. And we have to actively push back against that privilege, a privilege that allows white folks to actively ignore racial inequality and focus on other types of oppression. Audre Lorde said there is no single issue struggle because we are not single issue people. And privilege is an incredibly blinding force, which can convince us that a battle is not ours to fight, and can convince us that we're not a part of the problem, and can convince us to overlook the role we play in the greater story. And so we need to treat our identities intersectional. And for the white folks in the room, y'all need to treat your identities as intersectional as I treat mine as a black mixed woman. And the first step to our effective resistance is knowing ourselves. How can we challenge the enemy outside of us if we haven't figured out what the enemy is with inside of us? And for that reason, we have to figure out how we will resist privilege. We have to figure out what a progressive anti-racist looks like. What does an anti-racist socialist look like in this world? Whiteness, for many folks, is the American default, where we've convinced ourselves that we are the regular people the individual human being unaffected by the system. It is a set of social and economic values and traps. In Seattle, being 70% white and one of the wealthiest cities in the United States, we'd be remiss not to question this correlation. Standing Rock, Flint, workers in the global south, and the initial targets of the many executive orders that have come down are over overwhelmingly people of color. We need to make changes in our nation, but also look at Seattle. Who are the first to get hit the hardest in our city? It's often people of color and the cash poor. 
White folks are not the ones suffering most here. And so regardless of whether or not we have socialist values, if we're not actively challenging white supremacy, we're not all going to get free. And if we don't all get free, then we aren't free. It is my belief that a resistant Seattle will question all forms of privilege and oppression, unabashedly and unapologetically. A resistant Seattle centers the brilliance, the solution building, and the needs of the most marginalized and vulnerable among us. A resistant Seattle is led by the grassroots and is willing to take direction from folks who may not have the systemic merits, but they have the life merits that mean they can build the sorts of solutions we most need. In the end, we all have a human right to education, health care, housing, and clean water. A resistant Seattle is not a surviving Seattle, it is a thriving Seattle. And it is a place where all people who want to can be healthy and whole. Thank you.